Hello, I'm Daniel. I'm co-advised by Beckham and Field, and today I'm mostly going to be talking about phase field modeling, specifically of sintering processes. Uh, over last summer and into the fall, I did a literature review, both in the theory of nutrient system, but that's not really what I'm talking about today. I'm primarily going to be talking about the phase field modeling that I've been learning about over the past semester and a little bit of the semester before and how we can implement that in predicting the centering of various material systems. So phase field modeling in the most general sense is a modeling method generally focused at the mesial scale, specifically grain on the scale of grains, it's not atomistic modeling. Uh, it's primarily used to model the evolution of a material as a function of time. So that's things like grain growth or solidification or various changes of phase. And specifically for centering, we're going to primarily be looking at grain growth and that field of things, and not so much about phases, hopefully. Before in phase field modeling, each phase, grain, or other domain is modeled with a an order parameter for so it's going to be one if you're currently in that grain or domain and zero otherwise and on the boundaries between these domains it's going to be a gradient somewhere between the zero and one this is a non-conserved parameter and what i mean by that is how much of this <coughs> domain exists in the system will change as the model progresses and this is different from on something like a compositional variable, such as mass or otherwise chemical composition, which is a conserved parameter and does not change across the system as a whole as a function of time. As I mentioned before, the boundary between these boundary between domains is characterized by a gradient in the order parameter, ranging from zero to one. And this results in a diffuse interface that moves as the model progresses. We've got a little diagram on the right from a piece of literature introducing the field field model. This is specifically a diagram showing the difference between a solid and liquid interface, which is not exactly what we're looking at, but the gradient structure of the interface is consistent across all phase field modeling. This interface and the movement thereof is driven by an optimization of a thermodynamic function. This is usually your entropy, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz free energy, though the latter two are pretty similar in this case. And although this equation is foundational to the model, it's basically what defines how this model develops, it is not directly solved in the model. Instead, it's gradients of this function that determine the evolution of the conserved and non-conserved parameters. This can be applied in centering by using these mobile gradient boundaries to predict how these grains will shift and deform as centering progresses. In theory, they can predict things like diffusion, net growth, and densification of these centered powders. Hopefully, this will hopefully be able to predict the final state, including density, pore size, and distribution, and other relevant parameters for a centered material as a function of input variables such as temperature, pressure, initial particle morphology, and things of that nature. Uh, this can, however, get extremely complicated, especially depending on just how in-depth and complicated a model you want to create. For a simple example, just to make a proof of concept, I was basing a model off of a pre-existing work from 2016 where they looked at a two particle system with constant temperature, no applied pressure, and a relatively simple function for the free energy. And that is the first equation you see at the top. That equation has three key terms. The first, F of C and, and alpha, that defines the bulk energy. The second term, if my notes are accurate, is the surface energy of the system, specifically the energy between the grains and the void where there's the material. And the third term is the boundary energy, the grain boundary energy between the two grains. The bulk energy is further defined by the second equation on the slide here, which is rather complicated with a few variables that I'm going to define later on. 
but the main purpose of this is to translate the energy of the actual physical system into the something the model can use with the diffuse barriers between the grains of void or grains of each other. However, as I mentioned previously, this first free energy equation is not actually directly solved. Instead, the two equations that define the phase field model and determine the evolution of the system is the bottom two. The equation on the left describes the mass continuum, is a mass continuum equation and defines how material, well, in this case, simply diffuses through the model with M in this equation relating to the diffusion of material. And the right equation relates the uh, evolution of the order parameters and how they change the function of time as the model progresses. In the paper that this model uh, was mainly shown in, this was what they found. Basically, it showed the necking and growth between two particles in their system, relatively consistent with an experimental result that they drew from a previous study. However, their model was extremely simple. It did not include quite a few things in that. I believe I talked about it on a different slide. But as a result, it's not a direct match, and there are significant differences between the experimental and theoretical results. Additionally, because this was such a simple isolated system, it might not be representative for larger symmetry processes that involve more than two particles. I was working on modifying this their uh, formulation to use a different material system, specifically looking at aluminum instead of silver, since sintering of aluminum powder is something that I believe we will be looking at in the future, and also using a different solving method. They use loose, whereas we're using console, which is a multi-physics solver that can be used for modeling phase field structures or doing phase field simulations, but I found difficulty in getting console to function for me. Now, the issues with this model as it stands is, well, there's a lot of them, but a few of the key ones are the diffusion, which is what defines the motion of material to the system, is rather primitive. I simplified their model even further, assuming that the only diffusional process that exists is volume diffusion, but this is not accurate. And both surface diffusion and grain boundary diffusion, which have different rates, will have a high relevance on the actual centering of these particles. Additionally, the free energy equation is missing a few relevant terms as well, including rigid body rotation and the strain energy of the system, both of which are highly relevant to centering processes, but were not included, included in this relatively primitive simulation. An additional issue that I that we'll likely run into is obtaining the initial material properties for these simulations. In order for the actual simulation to replicate reality to any reasonable extent, there needs to be relatively accurate information for everything that's involved in the free energy equation. For this simple model, that's primarily surface energy, grain boundary energy, uh, diffusion constant activation energy, and grain boundary mobility are the main five memory serves. But as the model gets more complicated and we include the other functions, we will need additional material properties as well to make the models accurate, which may prove difficult. Additionally, this model that I was working on modifying is specifically for aluminum, adapting this to ceramic materials, including the dope ceramic structures we were looking at previously, is going to be even more difficult as they have more complicated diffusional processes and other relevant issues, such as reduction or other chemical instability, the possible formation of secondary phases, complicated crystal structures, and other such complications, which will need to be included if you want to have as accurate of a phase field model as possible. Uh, this was just an addendum for various mathematical constants that I don't think I addressed, but something I did want to note. For these equations, most of the terms here, specifically omega, xi, and k, kn, and k alpha, these are not raw material parameters, but are derived from, that's what I want to do, sorry about that.
These parameters, the model parameters, are not materialized themselves, but are derived from material properties using these series of equations. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>